Welcome to LifeSpring Church's YouTube channel. We hope you enjoy Sunday's message. To find out more about us, please head to www.lifespringchurch.org.uk. Hello, LifeSpring. I hope everybody's keeping well. I hope you've had a good week. The weather's been a little bit up and down, but we've made the most of the sun while we've had it. Welcome too to those who are listening outside of Reading. And uh, this week you might notice there's no blue sunglasses on. I hadn't realised I was wearing them until I saw myself um, on the video. I want to talk today on some reflections from Psalm 46 for such a time as this. So let's just read the psalm. First of all, I'm reading from the NIV version. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give away and the mountains fall into the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in an uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he's brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Well, one of those Psalms which you may have heard quoted quite a lot in these days of crisis for obvious reasons. And some of those verses you could relate to um, the turmoil which we are going through at this moment in time. But it's good for us to know that God is for us and God is with us. The first verse says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in time of trouble. That is such an encouragement to each one of us. Whatever we're going through at this moment in time, we know that God is always there. He's always with us. He never leaves us. And when the times are tough, and even when things are going well, we know that God is our Father. And he loves and he cares for us. So verse 2 says, therefore we will not fear. The UK, like many nations across the world, is full of fear. Understandably, maybe, with this hidden killer around. But the psalmist is confident in the midst of storms and all manner of adversity, God is faithful, God is trustworthy. Therefore, we have no reason to fear. I was out street pastoring the other day and we were just in the butt centre and this gentleman comes up in his car, um, probably younger than myself, so, so quite a youngster, um, and, and he had a hat on and he had a hoodie on and he had a mask on and he had gloves on and a coat on um, and he looked at us and he, he wondered, you know, who are you? What are you doing? And we explained that we're from the church in Reading and we're just here to help people that might be in need. And um, he was so panicked. And he stuck his hand out with his gloves. He said, would you go and buy a paper for me? I need a paper. Would you go and get a paper for me? Um, so, so I trotted off and I got him the paper which, which he wanted. Um, because he was frightened to even go in the shop. He was so worried of fear. And I brought the paper back to him and uh, he, he just couldn't understand how we could even be considering to be out there in the streets of Reading. Oh, and we had, the, um, we had equipment with us. We had the hand cleansers and the gloves if we needed them and the masks and etc. like that. But fear had gripped this man. And fear has gripped many. You, you, if you look at the statistics, they're actually saying that even if um, later on tonight we, we hear there might be a release and, 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 and we're able to, to go back to work a little bit more freely, 60-70% of the population would be so worried 
about going back. But this psalm says, but we will not fear. And I want to say again, that doesn't mean that we are immune. Well, not necessarily. Um, we, we, we don't have any need to be afraid. Some people I know have contacted, contracted COVID-19 and they've recovered. I was talking to one person, he's my age, similar to my age anyhow, and he was saying in all his life, he's never had such a severe sickness. He was in a bad way. He rang 111 and uh, they gave him instructions. He didn't need to go into hospital, but for days he was so, so ill. And he said, just warn everybody, do not, do not, do, do not take any risks. Do not allow this uh, virus to, to, to get hold of you too. But, but he or, or, or his wife ran, ran, ran one of our cell leaders and, and Jim and Heather, they prayed. And within days, there was a remarkable recovery. And when I spoke to Kevin, he said, you know, I just give thanks that I was able to. Well, he could have prayed himself, but actually he called out to the cell leaders and they prayed and healing came. Hallelujah. God is a God who heals. But there was another well-known Christian in Reading who got seriously ill and uh, was taken into hospital. Eventually he was put on a ventilator and he didn't recover. And he's gone to be with the Lord. And either way, we have the victory because Jesus won that on the cross. We have nothing to fear. Death is defeated. The King is alive. Can't wait till we're back together singing that again here. Sickness is also defeated. And church, we need to pray for a greater release of power, greater release of faith and anointing, that we see more people healed as we pray and as we minister the kingdom of God. But they're not the verses which I wanted to focus on today. In fact, the verse I want to really focus on is, is verse 10. And verse 10, well known, it says this, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. Hallelujah. Did you hear that? He is still God and he will be exalted. And how is he going to be exalted? Well, it's through you and me. It's through the church of Jesus Christ. He will use us, his people, to lift up his name over the earth. Our buildings may be closed, but the church is very much alive. The church is the hope of the world. You may just have heard me mention that before. God has not been caught out with this disease. In fact, there have been much worse plagues that um, humanity has had to deal with in the past, but he still reigns. He's still king. He will be exalted and his glory will cover the earth. And we should be looking and expecting, uh, because we love him, that he will be turning what appears to be bad into good, because that's the sort of God that he is. So be still and know that he is God. He will be exalted. I don't know about you, but in some ways, I see some positive things coming out of this enforced closure. It reminds me, for example, of the importance of Sabbath, of a day of rest. A couple of years ago, uh, Jackie and I, we were in Botswana and we were at the wedding of Matthews and Studu. And we met one of Studu's friends, who's a Seventh-day Adventist pastor. And we got on really well and uh, we chatted and he was so interested in finding out about G12. In fact, he was going to come to Colombia um, last January, couldn't make that, was intended to come to the conference, which has now got postponed. But he was really interested in, in what we were doing, in, in discipling and with a heart to, to reach nations. And I was interested in what he was talking about with regard to the Sabbath, you know, Seventh-day Adventists, you're a little bit separate from the rest of um, Christendom in one sense, because you choose to keep Saturday as the day for worship. And we chatted and, and I was asking him sorts of questions he would be asked by most Christians, I guess. And I was fascinated because here was a Seventh-day Adventist who didn't seem to be treating Saturday in a legalistic way. But in some way, he, together with his family, had 
had made the, the Sabbath work for them in a really positive way. And, I, and as he was talking, I could see there was something really positive about just setting aside 24 hours to be recharged, to be refreshed, away from the pressures and the busyness of life, just to spend time with your family, to spend time eating, to spend time with the Lord, um, and, and, and to be able to put on hold everything else. And so every so often I've said to Jackie, and to my shame, I've actually done nothing about it, but I said, Jackie, I'd love us to plan a weekly Sabbath. And I look at my diary and I think, I don't know how I could make that work. You know, there's meetings here on a, this evening and that evening and, and, and at other times. But, but at the end of the day, if you want to make it work, you're going to make it work, won't you? And I was saying, look, maybe we should, you know, on a Sunday evening, for example, we'll, we'll, we'll have 24 hours rest. We'll start with a meal. We'll turn off our phones. No internet. Can you imagine it? No internet for 24 hours. And, and we'll, we'll have a meal together and, um, and uh, you know, we can pray together and we can remember the goodness of God together. Um, and it wouldn't be legalistic, you know, I, I, I think you know, maybe we might watch a bit of television from time to time or we could read books or go for a walk. Or, but we could just be so much more chilled. It would be a day of recharging and refreshing. I think there's a lot to speak for in doing such a thing. I'm still to put it into practice though. But this time has reminded me of this when there's been an enforced slowdown. And some of us are not good at slowing down. But when lockdown came, for many of us, we've just had to do that. I remember reading about President Trump's son, son-in-law and his wife Ivanka and um, she, she converted Judaism, certainly the year they got married anyhow. So, so, so they're, they're living as, as um, I can't remember the right description, but modern day Jews. And every Friday they have a Sabbath or Shabbat meal. And I was impressed because I was reading this, well, after he was, President Trump was elected, but uh, he was doing this for years and years before, a very successful high power businessman and she a very successful businesswoman too. And yet they chose to make time. And the challenge was to turn their phones off and spend time with their little children at the time. And they would have their meal and they would spend the rest of Saturday together before their phones went on again in the evening. And I'm thinking if high powered people and uh, important sort of people like that are able to make that work, I want to make it work too at some time. So we have this time of close down. Have you noticed nature is recovering? I saw some pictures of some sand dunes in Spain, which have not looked like they look now for over 50 years. The, the thousands of tourists which have come year after year after year have complete, or had completely spoilt the, 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 the dunes. But now they've been restored again to their former glory because no human beings have been there. And you've probably read about the uh, clear waters in Venice, which have been unknown in this, in their, in this lifetime. And, and even with jellyfish so clean, you can see the jellyfish swimming up um, the, the, the canals, uh, canals in Venice. Nature is recovering. I was in Reading, again, street pastoring, and, uh, and, and it's so strange in the, um, the middle of the day, there's no hustle and bustle, there's no people rushing around. There are a few more now, but when I was out there, there was, it was very, very quiet and it was eerily quiet. And you could hear the birds and you could hear sounds and, and maybe see stuff. There's buildings around the abbey, which I'd not ever really noticed before. And I think all of this sort of stuff comes when we choose to close down a little bit. So be still. Or, more literally putting it, cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Oh, how I wish I found that easy to do. Some do I know, but I'm not one of them. It's not that I'm always rushing around here and there or always so physically active. But it's my mind, it's what's going through my mind, it's what I'm thinking about and what, it's what I'm thinking I need to be planning and 
praying into and you know, how to motivate, how to encourage, how to disciple, how to lead, how to have an impact, how to make a difference in, in this time of crisis or, or when this time of crisis is over. What's it going to be like? How are we going to be as a church? All of these things are going through my mind. And, um, and, and I know that there's a call of God on our lives, which is far bigger than we will ever be able to work out ourselves. And my mind sometimes grapples with these things. And it's just trying, I just, I need to slow down, to stop, to cease driving, to be still and listen to that. Listen to that um, small, quiet voice and know that God is in charge. He's our pastor and uh, he's going to lead the way. And I know I'm not alone when I say it. It, it's not hard to um, find it hard to actually stop. When I hear that some people, they, they go off to these silent retreats and I'm thinking, oh my word, three days of not speaking, of not talking, um, three days of quiet and you're just shut away in a monastery or wherever it might be. It's the last place I'd want to be. And yet some of the people I know who've gone, my friends have gone there, They've also gone with those same sort of fears and it was so difficult to start with too. They found it difficult, but at the end of three days or a week or however long it was, it was worth the pain. It was worth going through in order to come through to that place of stillness and quietness with God. And I believe that's what God is giving us an opportunity for now. Not that everybody here that I'm speaking to has got more time on their hands, no. But it is a season where many more have. And let's use that time wisely, but it's a season where possible, let's make adjustments to quieten down, to listen to what God wants to say to us. For others, there's a lack of peace, the striving. You sometimes see it when people come up for prayer, for ministry. Um, there's an intensity about them. There's, they may be speaking away in tongues. It's like they're trying to urge or, or, or get God to do something. And I sometimes have to say, stop, stop, stop. You know, I can say it in that case, but I find it difficult myself. But stop, just let go and let God. Let him come and do what he wants to do. No need for striving. Because if we strive and struggle, we so easily miss the blessing God wants to bring to us. So some of us, we're pushing, we're striving, we're trying to make things happen. So whether it's us, we're busy physically or, or just internally, for all of us, life's spring, it's time to be still and know that he's God. And being still can take different forms, but a significant part is seeking him, knowing him wanting to experience him, to find him again. It's about pressing in to his presence. And that doesn't come with just a minute or two in the morning or five minutes in the shower or whatever it might be. That takes time. And I'm speaking to myself. I need to give that time too. And even though, like Jesus had all these pressures on him all the time, he decided to just put time aside, put the pressures aside. And he might be thinking, I've got a full day tomorrow. I've got disciples to appoint. I've got people to teach. I've got crowds to reach. But even so, he chose to spend the night in prayer with God. He withdrew from those pressures and spent time with his Father in heaven. And at other times, if it wasn't at night, even before dawn, while it was still dark, the Bible tells us, he'd get up and he'd go to his secret place, if you like, and spend time with his father. There was something in his heart which was drawing him because he knew if he was going to be fruitful, if he was going to be successful, if he was going to complete the mission that God had called him to do, it needed to come out of the strength of the father and the spirit and not his own um, natural strength. And the same is for us. If Jesus needed to do that, how much more do we? And church, we've got a big vision. You know, um, 
when we when we came into the G12 vision, our eyes were opened. Before it was, well, not immediately before, when it was Southcote Fellowship and Southcote was the focus, and then it was with Prospect Community Church and Prospect was the focus. But 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 now it's the town, it's the nation, it's wherever God leads us, and it's a vision of transformation of 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 souls being saved of the gospel being preached and and people responding it's a vision of forming converts into disciples and disciples into leaders so that we can influence everywhere we go with the with the kingdom of god and the gospel of jesus christ that's a big vision it, it's the great commission go and make disciples of all nations and that's the vision we have and that's the commission Jesus has given us and it is totally impossible in our own strength. So right now I believe it's a season for us to say, okay, I give up. I'm going to spend time seeking you. I'm not going to allow the pressures for me, the pressures of the vision and everything else, for, for others, pressures or whatever it might be. I'm not going to allow them to um, take over my life, but rather I'm going to carve out time to pray, to worship, and to seek the Lord. Julia was sharing some verses, or, or a prophetic word with um, a few of us just, just recently. And I want to just read out some of the lines to you. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is Julia's word or whether she heard it from somewhere else. It doesn't really matter. We have to weigh it up and decide whether we believe this is what God is saying. But this is what... Uh, she sent me, I saw a cloud the size of a man's hand over Life Spring Church. It grew heavier and bigger. Prayers and praise have gone up and the cloud is getting heavier and bigger. There is going to be an outpouring of his reign, his glory. How you press in determines the outpouring. Now this was given before the latest COVID-19 crisis that we're in. How you press in determines the outpouring. Oh. Now, as I say, we need to weigh those words. But if it's from God, I don't want to miss out. That which we've been longing for, that which some of us have been praying for, maybe for decades. God's saying it's within reach. That's exciting. But our response determines the blessing. So it's not like it's automatically going to happen because God has ordained it. No, um, God always chooses to use, um, I can't say always, but usually he chooses to use humanity to connect with his purposes in order to bring them about on this earth. And the church is his favoured vessel. And Life Spring, the word says here, as we press in, it will determine the outpouring. So I want to encourage us in this time of quietness, um, yeah, a time of to pray. And if we need to gather for prayer, let's gather. If we need to pray alone, let's pray alone. But let's press in. Let's be still and know that he's God. He will be exalted. And we need to press in humbly, with open hearts, with sincere hearts. And at this time, it might be that we're not seeking his works, his hands, but we're seeking his face, we're seeking him. We're wanting to get to know him again. And just maybe in all the busyness of life and all the other things which take up our time, we can choose to say, I'm going to press in like I've not pressed in at least for a long time, maybe ever. I'm going to press in because if there's an outpouring to be released, I want to be in on it. And he wants us to be in on it too. So let's come with open hearts. And I say humble hearts because the still small voice will sometimes be 
instructions. We need to change. We need, what, let's ask the question, what, what needs to change in my life? What do I need to repent of? What do I need to turn away from? What am I giving too much time to right now? What am I not giving enough time to right now? Let's come humbly before him and seek him. And for some, maybe the finger will be, you've become hard hearted. You've lost your faith. Unbelief, logic has come in. I want to restore faith. For some of you, where's that first love? Remember how you loved at first. I want to bring you back to that time. For others of us, it may be there's a passivity in your heart. Or the easiest thing in the world is just to blob, just to sit down, turn on the television, do this, computer games, whatever it might be. But he wants us. He wants us to come to him. He wants to know us and he rewards those who seek him. And he promises to draw close to those who draw close to him. And let's be open and let's listen and let's be prepared for change. Because if there's a cloud coming, if there's an outpouring from the Lord, we need to be ready. So, church, take the opportunity. Press in by yourselves. We meet Thursday, seven o'clock, used to be six o'clock, but right at this moment in time, seven o'clock in the morning, come and join us for prayer. Um, I know some life groups are spending extra time in prayer. Um, I believe Julia and one or two others may be wanting to have other opportunities which we'll be communicating and, uh, um, and, and you know, join them for prayer too. But let's take time during this season to press in and to pray and to be ready for all that God wants to do for us. I want to close with just one last verse, probably my favourite verse from the psalm. Verse 4, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. As we wait, as we press in, as we draw close to him in worship and praise, I believe well, Julia talked about a cloud, maybe that's there to come, but there's a river. That's there already. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Life spring, there is so much more. I believe he wants to release joy, freedom, gladness, celebration in our hearts right now. God wants to give us the joy which comes from spending time in his presence. The joy of the Lord, Nehemiah tells us, is our strength. Let him touch your hearts again. He wants to give us, I believe, this gift of joy. And then life spring, we can take this gift of joy and give it to the people of Reading. What are you so happy about? People were looking at all oh, this is happening around us and there's this and there's that and, uh, you know, there's... Um, our finances might be trouble, the jobs might be... Yeah, we need to, we need to be, resonate with, with the hardships which will affect us as well. But even in the midst of those difficult circumstances, God wants to release a joy and a gladness from our hearts um, because in his presence, there's fullness of joy. So I pray that we'll be able to touch him in that way and know that greater release because the church is the only people on earth who can bring real everlasting joy and the world needs a touch of that too. So this river from God makes glad the church of God. I pray that all of us more and more will know the joy which comes from his presence in spite of the difficulties and challenges we are facing. One last verse, or a different translation of the same verse from uh, verse 10. Surrender your anxiety. Be silent and stop your striving. And you will see that I am God. I am the God above all the nations. And I will be exalted throughout the whole earth. Amen. The Lord bless you, life spring. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
We hope you enjoyed Sunday's message as much as we did. To find out more about Lifespring Church, head to www.lifespringchurch.org.uk.